Hello guys. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my little online teaching setup for tonight. I just feel like having a cup of tea and showing you some new music that I got and just I get a lot of questions about what is kind of interesting as far as repertoire goes. I'm going to just Pour myself a quick little cup of tea first and hi guys I'm just making a quick cup of tea and then I'm going to show you some of my teaching materials so because um, I got some new repertoire in today and I'm really excited to check it out I usually use like you know the Suzuki things and some folk music and some pop music and whatnot but um, I recently heard of the Barbara Barber um, books and they're, they seem to be great. So we'll take a look through that and I'm going to show you what's in my teaching bag. <laughs> but first, time for tea. Today it snowed and I've been stuck inside for the entire day. I, I tried to go for a walk, but it was just really, really really snowy so I'm kind of cabin feverish at the moment and um, these are new these are some crystals that my dad got me from the Tucson gem and mineral show there's a big gem show there every year and I have a fluorite crystal and a quartz crystal and of course the rose quartz and a smoky quartz crystal this was given to me by a friend and um, yeah, so they're keeping us company tonight. Yep. So I just finished teaching for the night and I thought it would be fun to hang out a little bit. Hi, oh, it's been snowing. I know, <laughs> I'm really ready for spring too. So first of all, I keep all of my stuff in a bag. I have a backpack, um, but that just gets overloaded and this gets overloaded too, really but I just thought I would go through and show you some things that I keep if any of you are teachers or if any of you are just interested in like maybe some new music let me know so one of the one thing that I really love is 77 degrees nice in Puerto Rico <laughs> Okay, so I love to have these little affirmation cards because people come in from their lesson, uh, for their lesson and they've been in their crazy day and, sorry, I've got a hair in my face. And sometimes it's nice to just kind of set the tone and have a nice little thought for your lesson. So let's have a little thought for our little meetup tonight. Whoops, just, I'm just discombobulated, <laughs> sorry. Okay, magic. Oh, that's a neat one. I got the magical one. Let's see. Um, I believe in magic. I see evidence of it all the time. And though the tricks can probably be explained away, I'd away by something sensible and ordinary. I'd rather not ruin the fun. Other people can fill their days with mere coincidence. I'll fill mine with that's unbelievable. <laughs> so anyway, just kind of a fun little thought for the day or evening. So I always put these out on the table for people to kind of pick and usually everybody likes them. So that's one thing that's kind of fun. And um, anyway, let's just kind of jump in. I have my glasses. I used to love these what's in my purse videos. This is a very old kind of video. These are some glasses that I've had for a long time and I don't like to wear them, but probably should wear them so that I can actually see. So that's what they look like, but there's a little kind of reflection, so I'll take them off for now. So glasses, of course a metronome. This actually belongs to one of my students. I am very good at accidentally stealing metronomes because they all look the same and I don't know which one's mine, which one's not mine. Um, so the other thing that I find really helpful as a teacher, if you have a long teaching day or if you know you just need to wake up, is having a little face spray. Hi, <laughs> thank you. This um, is by a little French company and it has like peppermint in it and just kind of wakes you up. So sometimes if I've been teaching for a long day, it just kind of wakes me up in between classes to spray this on my face. 
So there's that. And let's see, I have some gum. I have a little bag of pencils and highlighters and whatnot. And let's get into actually something interesting. I have a little journal that I keep track of my online lessons in, so I'm not always the best at doing that, but I usually try to write down what we're doing. And um, do you ever dream about playing the violin naked? <laughs> mm, no, but I did dream that I woke myself up this morning screaming a swear word. I was like screaming in my dream and I woke up. <laughs> so that's how I woke up this morning. But um, yeah, so I keep track of all of my online lessons and my own like practicing in this book as well. So um, it's nice to have a little, you know, journal and some paper. So, um, okay. This is actually a really great book. It's missing the cover page. In Merton, Missouri, every Tuesday and Wednesday, it snowed. That's funny. In Philly, it was raining like every Monday or Tuesday for like two months. <laughs> this is a great book of easy pop songs, and they have it for violin and viola, and they have things like um, Can't Help Falling in Love, Clocks, um, Edelweiss, Moon River, um, Scarborough Fair, Sound of Music. Let's just take a look at like, one of my favorites is, um, where is it? I just want you to see that the, the arrangement is really simple. So, um, and it has chords, so it's easy to add your own things to it too because the chords are there. So it's, it's very easy, like it's definitely easy. Um, pop music. So if you're in like Suzuki book one or something, you can pick this up and it's really easy to play through. And let's see, anything else? These you've seen before in like a video a long time ago I did. Um, I missed your question. I'm sorry. Um, okay. This is called, this is by Bill Matheson. Matheson. <laughs> they have a series of waltz books. This is just full of beautiful little songs like Ashokan Farewell and um, here. You know what, I should probably play you some of these things. So, okay, here, I'll start with this one. I'll play you my favorite one from the Easy Pop Melodies. Can't help falling in love, I love this one. Okay. Pages, clocks, let's see. Um. So they're just kind of easy, sight readable things you can play through. That again is from this Easy Pop Melodies book. You can get this on Amazon or on Char or somewhere. Um, I'll try, you know what, I should probably just link these below so you can find them. The other one that I really love is this waltz book, and there's, there's a bunch of them. I really like the first one. This is the first one. It has, I mean, so many people know this song. recommend for 
is second position as difficult for you to find it as I? Oh, oh, I have some tricks for shifting um, and getting around you. Just like always know where your first finger is. If you know where your first finger is, then all of your other fingers can kind of find themselves because they're all related to first finger. And you wanna check your first finger against the open string. So make sure that it's in tune against the open string too. Okay, so let me grab this again. What else, what else? Um, I've got this book, 100 Classical Themes. This is also a great supplement to, if you're in like Suzuki book one or Suzuki book two, or even if you're more advanced, but you just want some sight reading practice, you know, a lot of times uh, teachers don't really go over sight reading. Um, because there's just not enough time. You have to get through all of your technique and scales and everything. But in lessons, I usually, I like to have a little bit of time to read through new music together. So, um, because I think when I was growing up, I was always just kind of like, always playing like one piece at a time. So I was not a very good, oh, you played the cello, nice. I was not a very good sight reader. And I still feel kind of insecure about that to this day because I just not really used to, you know, sitting down and just sight reading stuff. But this one has some beautiful, beautiful pieces in it. Um, you guys might be familiar with Claire de Lune. Please stay open by Debussy. This is a fun one. They usually play this on New Year's Eve, so. pieces from famous classical um, pieces. Romeo and Juliet by Tchaikovsky. Recognize this one. That one's kind of a fun one to do. It's fun to kind of use as an etude. So I'd really recommend this. This is a great, um, my funny Valentine. Um, okay, let's see. <laughs> such a cute piece. I have a tutorial about how to play that one. I'll have to listen. I'll have to think about it. So continuing on, there's, uh, these are the new ones that I recently got and I'll kind of read through some of these with you. I also have a few of the Suzuki books. I have a lot of the Suzuki books, so I usually keep up to. Did you see the tutorial? Yeah, I forget what note I started on. You can really start on any note, it doesn't matter, because you know you just gotta know the intervals. 
which I don't because <laughs> I can't remember it. But I have Suzuki book whoop, two, three, and I have some for Viola in there too. I usually try and carry a few things because kind of depending on where people are, I mean, usually people have their own music, but sometimes it's nice to just try and sight read some things or try something in like a different position from an easier book that they're more familiar with. So I, I usually just have a few of those. Um, I teach a lot of adults and so they don't have like a lot of time to do a bunch of etudes, although we do do etudes. Yes, <laughs> there's some Bach in there. <laughs> I think there's a couple, actually. There's the, the cello suites and then the sonatas. So um, the other book that's in here that I really, really like is this one. Um, what sonata? I, I, the only one that I know is the first one. That's the only one that I've ever studied. So which, which one are you working on? Are you working on one? <laughs> so this is called The Fiddler's Fake Book. And it's kind of like the Bible of fiddle tunes, although I'm sure there's there's probably, you know, another one that's got some awesome songs in it, but um, let's see. I really, there's some ones that I just really, really love in this one. Um, I just turned to the Kesh jig. I don't know if you guys know this one. Um, yeah, so this is actually an Irish song. It's called the Kesh Jig, and I, I really would love to meet an Irish fiddle music teacher so that I could actually learn the style right, but... <laughs> Varna. I love, 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 love this piece. The Road to Listing Varna. And um, I can literally play this song for an hour. So it sounds like this. <laughs> and double stops. How do you know what notes to add with the double stops? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, if, you, if you happen to have a arrangement that gives you the chord at the top, then you know how to figure out the chord. So it's just, um, you know, let's say we have an A chord. So you have, you would just find any A on the staff and then you stack thirds on top of it. So if it's a space note, you find the next space note and then the next space note on that. So you need three notes or on the violin or viola, it's just every other finger. So you'd have A, C, and then E. So it's every other finger open, skip first finger, go to second finger, and then go to fourth finger. So A, C, E. And um, you can add, um, well, the interval of a sixth, if you, if you go a sixth down from the melody, um, that's automatically a harmonious interval. So is a fourth and a fifth and a third. But a sixth is very simple because you have um, consecutive fingers. So for example, in this piece, it starts on first finger on this string. And a sixth down would just be adding the open string below. 
If the melody was my second finger, a six down from that would be my first finger, but on the lower string. So it's the finger below the melody finger, but on the lower string. If my melody was here, I take my second finger, put it on the lower string. If my melody is here, a sixth below that is here. You also have the open string. Um, so, but if you have the chord, then you can actually make sure that you're adding a chord note. So, on the at the beginning, I have an E minor chord. Um, actually, on the viola, it's A minor. So, it would be A minor. I could add a C with that. That's my open string. And I'm actually adding an E because I prefer that. That's also part of the chord. I just think that sounds more interesting than this. The next note is on the viola. It's an E. And if I just if I play open G with it, that's not part of the A minor chord. But this one is A is. So I can just take my first finger and add that below. Anyway, it's a little bit, it's kind of confusing, but I should probably do a video just dedicated to how to add double stops. In fact, I have a video, I think I have a video about that. It's kind of, we did that with Christmas songs. Um, some, it's something like double stops. If you want to know a quick trick to do that, I have a video on that, I think, already, but can make another one. <laughs> so, um, this is a great book. I would definitely pick this one up, sure. <laughs> I pick this one up and what else do I have? I also find it really helpful as a teacher to have a hotspot so that I can always have access to um, Wi-Fi for my iPad because I usually pull up some music from the internet in lessons too. It's nice to have, you know, IMSLP at my fingertips and, you know, Google. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, I always have my iPad with me. And let's see, what else is in here? Suzuki. Oh, 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 these are great um, duets if you are a little more advanced. These are by Playl, and I have recommend, I usually recommend these to everyone. These are much more advanced. They're for violin and viola, these ones in particular. Three grand duets, they're for violin and viola. The violin part sounds like this. Oops. It's kind of a fun little, that's the first one, um, and the, anyway, it's just fun. Playo also has lots of duets for vi two violins. Mazas as well has duets, and I really love to play duets with, with my students in their lessons too, so yeah, we usually do like a little warm up with some kind of technique and then some sight reading, just play through some fun things together. And then um, we'll get to the repertoire that everybody's working on. So right now I'm like, <laughs> I'm making everyone do scales and working on their, building their technique. So that's what we've mostly been spending our lessons, you know, working with that and then getting some fun music in. But, okay, now I'm like out of breath. I'm just like so excited. Yeah, they're great duets. They really are. I'd recommend them. I also have um, some staff paper because I um, sometimes get like, can you write this song out? <laughs> so I, um, you know, usually have some staff paper with me. You can always print staff paper for free from blanksheetmusic.net, I think. Blanksheetmusic.net. Um, you can always print sheet music from. And I also have like my own <laughs> transcriptions of things. So yeah, Mazas is really great. I like, I like them too. I have, I've kind of transcribed a lot of fiddle tunes for the viola because that book that I recommended doesn't come for viola. So I have written out some things. Um, I also have my own things that I'm working on. So I always have my Bach cello suites. I love these, need these in my life. I also have the sonatas and partitas because I also sometimes feel like playing through them. And it's fun to scare people with. Like I like to just, ah, <laughs> it's a little bit scary. And I also have, oh, I also had for Valentine's Day, I had some little stickers for everyone, so. 
um, yeah, leftover stickers. And what else? More Suzuki books. Okay, so I've pretty much gone through everything. Let's just take a look at these. These are Solos for Young Violinists by Barbara Barber. And they also come for viola. They probably come for cello as well. I really, I don't know, honestly. Um, but let's take a look through um, volume one. This is volume two. They literally just arrived today, so I haven't honestly had a chance to really look at them because I've been teaching. I've been playing since I was seven, and I should be probably much better than I am <laughs> since I've been playing that long, but, you know, as long as I can play with a nice sound and play music, I'm happy. I don't know if I necessarily want to be able to, I don't know if I want to play, like, I used to, you know, when I was younger and when I was in, like, high school and middle school, it was all about, like, being flashy and being able to play this and showing off and everything, and that's awesome. But I'm kind of in a, pl a place right now where I just want to play music. Like, I just want to play something beautiful. I don't necessarily want it to be crazily flashy. So, okay. Um, this is Solos for Young Violinists, book one, volume one. And um, it starts out with this. Is that this is actually from Suzuki book um, one I think English folk song bohemian folk song it's got it's nice it's got a little preparatory scale at the beginning um, for each of the pieces to kind of get you in the right hand pattern so pretty simple stuff this is really good if you're in Suzuki book one looks like and I like that they're incorporating different key signatures. So they're kind of getting you accustomed to things that you would not encounter in Suzuki Book 1 at all. And yeah, so two flats, some interesting. This looks like it's kind of more the end of Suzuki Book 1 here. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, so... I just feel like, let's see what the end of this looks like. The elves dance, so you get a little bit of spiccato. That's nice. Um, the mosquito dance, I like the name of that one. So you get some pizzicato, you get to like play with chords a little bit. I'm curious what this mosquito dance sounds like. Let's just take a look at that. pieces in here. Mm. The last piece is in the style of Vivaldi. Interesting. book one Suzuki book two-ish would be good for volume one I think that you definitely would benefit from having Suzuki book one and this because um, you know Suzuki book is book one is pretty like simple have you ever um, no I haven't transcribed any actually yes the last of the Mohicans I kind of the elves dance yeah that's in here isn't it yeah <laughs> Um, I, I love the movie Last of the Mohicans, so I was kind of fiddling around with that, and I, I noodled through that. 
um, just from what I remember of the theme. You guys probably know this one. <laughs> I love it too. Yeah, it's such a beautiful, beautiful music. So let's take a look at number two. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's take a look at volume one for viola. Thanks. <laughs> so volume one for viola is a lot more, um, looks a lot harder <laughs> than what you would find in Suzuki book. Um, one, I mean, like this is much harder. This is the first piece. And I like that you get some double stops with it too. That's really nice. Um, I really like that. I'm missing some of your questions. I'm sorry, guys. I um, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to do too many things at once, I guess, I don't know. So, just trying to show you some of the, what the music looks like a little bit. The Sleeping Princess. And you get some flats, you get some double stops. I like these. I think that they're, they're definitely like, just, I mean, you need, you, I don't feel like you should just play through the Suzuki repertoire. Like, I feel like you need more music to play. Like, play pop music, play fiddle music, play classical music. Play, um, what else is there? <laughs> I'm probably missing something. Try playing things by ear, you know. It, don't expect to just be able to move just to the next piece in Suzuki, like all, you know, progressively. Cause you need like a little more time to stay where, jazz, yeah. <laughs> you need a little more, I think you need more time to kind of just get used to the instrument, you know. So, okay, so volume two for violin. Ooh. Let's take a look at the last piece or somewhere in the middle and just see kind of what the middle looks like. Um, so a little harder, but it's not going into like crazily high positions. It's actually not really, let's see. There's a little fourth position, there's some third position, there's some fifth, like a little taste of fifth, it looks like, or sixth. Yeah. It's nice, I really like, I like these. I'm like really excited about these. So let's take a look at volume three. This one's definitely harder. I don't know any of these pieces. So I'd say maybe if you're in, maybe if you're in like Suzuki book four or five, like Suzuki, I mean this volume three or volume four, I don't have volume four, would probably be good, like a good supplement. Like I feel like you were in like such a rush to go ahead that um, we forget that you need to take some time to play beautifully, <laughs> like play easy things and make them sound good. And then you can, you know, move on, move ahead and um, you can struggle on the hard things and, but you can also have a nice, some nice things that you can play well. So yeah. Is there anything else? I think that's kind of it. Yeah. Um, I'm currently working on this piece by Vieta for viola and it's really, really, really beautiful. I don't know if it's also for the violin, but before it gets too late here, I'm gonna just play you a little teeny bit of it. It basically says this theme of like a million times. So. I'll try 
had to mess that up. I'm like nervous. Capriccio for Viola by Henry Viotin. So I love this piece and when I go to the Isle of Man in April for the to attend not to participate but to attend the Lionel not the Lionel Tortoise the um, yeah the Lionel Tortoise sorry I was thinking my brain is <laughs> the Lionel Tortoise International Viola competition is there and um, I'm going to go observe and be a sponge and talk to people and have fun. So I'm, I think I will play this on a master class if I, um, I mean, I signed up to play on a master class. So I have to play something on a master class. Um, and I'm actually really hoping that I can actually interview somebody for this channel or do something for this channel <laughs> to show you guys about it because that's why this channel is called Violin Viola Masterclass is because I would like to expose you to people. So um, anyway, probably by the time I'm 45, like that will, <laughs> that will happen, I don't know. Okay guys, I think that's, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, I think it'd be fun. So I think that's it for tonight. Um, the walls here in my apartment are like paper thin, so everybody has been hearing me talk and play and teach for the entire evening. Thank you so much for joining and just hanging out. You kept me company and I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, um, let me see if there's anything else I can dabble to you about. My viola, I commissioned a viola. Yeah, the weather is, um, Seems to have stopped snowing, so that's nice. Yes. <laughs> Although I really, I have been enjoying the snow as long as it's not on a teaching day. Um, good night, yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? I commissioned a viola last year, this time last year by Hiroshi Izuka, and it's gonna be ready in like a month, and I'm so excited, I'm so, so excited. So um, I will go with a few of my friends and students to go meet it for the first time and I might make a video about it. We'll see. I will probably cry. <laughs> probably like I saw a picture of it today and my arms just went like mm. <laughs> they couldn't like they were trembling and excited and just like so just oh it's so nervous. So that will be in a month or so and then I go to England and then I'm trying to figure out what to do this summer. I don't really have any plans this summer. I was thinking of um, maybe checking out, I will, yeah, I will. Um, I was thinking of checking out Chloe Trevor's um, Academy this summer. That would be really fun. Last summer I took a few of my friends and students to Italy. We had a lot of fun and I would love to find something fun for us to do this summer. With whoever's interested but I actually really enjoy going out into the like outside of the US I think it's just makes it extra fun so maybe something in Canada or France or Italy or Germany or I don't know I have to figure out what I want to do this summer but I, otherwise I'll be like <laughs> I'm wasting my life maybe I'll go get Suzuki certified I know a lot of people are interested in Suzuki stuff and I'm not a Suzuki certified teacher so 
I kind of have my own way of doing things, but it would be interesting to have that background for sure. So, um, because I mostly teach adults, so it's a little bit different teaching them than teaching like a six-year-old, you know? So, <gasps> AJ, there's a summer string program in Prague. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm so happy that you joined. That's so great. Um, I actually saw that you were playing in Carnegie Hall recently. That's awesome. <laughs> well, um, you guys, I think I will let you go. I don't think there's anything else I can babble to you about. I'm gonna have one more sip of tea.